everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'd like to share with you the use case uh, as a great example of how we uncover true user requests uh, beyond the uh, true user needs beyond the client's request. Um, a few words about myself. I'm a product designer. I uh, I think I am a mix of artist and problem solver and sometimes uh, magician, <laughs> mind reader. And uh, I joined Open Social about two years ago, and I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> um, and let's go to the topic. I have 15 minutes. Um, so uh, we um, uh, usually, sometimes, we get uh, requests from our clients to help with uh, some features, something like work not like uh, it should work, or uh, there might be some problems with uh, user experience, and uh, once we get the request, that um, can we get, uh, can we make the research library looks like search with a colorful background? And some of the comments were like um, pretty specific: uh, remove uh, top padding, or do some font size, or do some colors, and um, of course going uh, going try to do this request would not be the right thing because uh, we uh, try to ask why we are doing something and not what. And here I, uh, of course, immediately ask myself, but why the client wants to do all this change? What they're struggling with? What are their problems? And here I, uh, I'd like to introduce a bit our, um, ah, yeah, of course we can. Uh, but, oops, it looks the same. <laughs> and here I'd like to introduce the feature objectives. It's our methodology that we uh, developed ourselves for Open Social. Uh, it's very nice uh, framework that we use um, now, I think, almost everywhere. We use it for new features, but also for the current features that we already have if we are working on their improvements. Basically, it's a framework that includes all basic information about any features that we have on the platform. It's very useful because with feature objectives, we can uh, see what the goal of the feature, for whom we're building this feature, what is the main challenge of this feature, and what are community values or user values, and how might we solve the challenges and main problems we have. So we applied feature objectives for this client's request, and we did these objectives for the resource library feature. And we found out that actually we have three main use cases for resource library. First one is access onboarding material uh, to uh, familiarize members with the platform or uh, its features. Uh, one table actually was today about onboarding. And I think that a uh, nice example of using the resource library is actually that new members can go to uh, this place to read any materials related to the platform that actually can help them to learn the platform and how to use it. Second use case is to discover educational content related to the community, so it might be anything related to educational purpose on the community uh, that can boost engagement and promote knowledge sharing. And the last use case that we saw is find guidance of how to use specific feature of specific things on the platform. So from this, we can already say that it's quite different from the search. Because the main uh, purpose of uh, uh, the research library that we saw is onboarding, educate, guide, that it uh, it serves as a central hub for curated by a site manager uh, uh, collection of information that tailored to the user needs, that relevant to the user request. And this content it is very accessible and very valuable to community uh, members. So just summarize the difference, we can see that uh, from the research we've done that for the resource library, uh, it's a curated and organized collection of resources. When search, 
provides access to all content of the platform. The second difference is that the research library focuses on onboarding, guiding, educating. As you can see, it has its own purpose and it's quite clear. But about search, it's, uh, the purpose is different. It allows to find information without specific curation. Uh, of, uh, or guidance from a site manager. Site, site manager can't go and set up general search of the platform. And the last one is that research library aims to help members navigate uh, the platform and engage more effectively within the community. When search serves as a general tool for people to find specific content, members, events. So, as an example, when a user, a community member, want to uh, find an information in search, they usually know what to look for because they need to add keywords, they need to type in the request. But if we're talking about um, research library, usually people go there because they have some goals, like find some education, uh, educating. Uh, uh, materials or uh, help them to guide in any feature. And the main problems based on the research, previously uh, investigation that we did, we saw that actually with the research uh, library we have three main problems. One is navigation, that it's actually not very um, easy to navigate. Uh, it has lots of filters and they are not very useful because we add them based on uh, uh, information that we have on backend related to the, uh, each uh, information, each content that is in the uh, resource library. Uh, the next problem was visual design uh, because uh, it uh, again was not so uh, um, engagement, engagement, engaging for people to actually browse the content in the research library. And the last one is value for users because indeed if it looks like search or anything else, if it doesn't have good navigation or visual design, people just don't see value of this page and they can't use it. Uh, even if it's very useful. So what we did, um, we decided to focus on resources. Uh, we decided to make a search box uh, smaller, not so uh, uh, call to action as it was before, uh, a search that should help but not take all attention. Uh, we hide all filters that were before uh, below the research library title because we actually want people help uh, help them to uh, just browse the content and see maybe these might be interesting for you or that one or maybe on the second page you will find something that is useful for you. But we didn't just remove filters, of course. <laughs> they might be very useful. We just hide them and uh, still uh, allows users to use filters if they like, for example, choose uh, topics only. Uh, conclusions, <laughs> what we learned. <laughs> First one is ask why. That's, um, I would say, that the basis of uh, any our approach to any feature requests or product improvements or basically anything. We always ask why we are doing this. What is the problem? Uh, the second one is um, explore, let's say. <laughs> Look at the problem, research and investigate, ask, uh, look from the different perspective and we need to um, explore the problem to see how we can solve it before going with any solutions. And the last one is empathy, of course. I, uh, it's my favorite because uh, I think when you can imagine yourself as a user, as a community member or as a site manager, you can uh, feel the struggle they have. You can understand why actually they want something they ask uh, because they 
can't do it just because they want. <laughs> Probably there are reasons, and I think empathy helps a lot to discover that reason. Let's on to dive in. <laughs> Any questions? 